and doing a one inch axle swap, you need to be hub centric, which means you need to be in the very, you need to be zero axis. So your hub, your hub, your bull gear spins on a axis, which I'm going to call zero, and your axle shaft needs to spin at a 90 degrees to that. So on a zero axis as well. Now, the thing that I realize after doing some of this stuff is that the hub gear actually gets seated into its zero axis using these little hub flanges or the bull flanges. All right, so if you've originally welded your hubs like this, I am sorry, you are not going to be able to do this 820 swap the way I'm doing this unless you're lucky like me and have a whole nother 820 that you want to swap but you don't want to do a one inch live axle. So I'm actually going to take out the, this is a stock diff. All right, so Nick actually found both these transaxles at our local scrapyard with a $300 price tag still on it. Someone threw this out and like it's gotten some dirt on it. This thing looked brand new. I'm talking fresh paint, brand new. Anyways, what I'm going to be doing is actually putting this into one of my other lawnmowers, a Ford LT model, but I'm not going to be doing the one inch live axle. I am just going to do it the original way, locking both the axle shafts to make it a locked one, in, one inch solid axle, I guess you could call it, with the bull gear assembly, everything. I'm going to do it the normal way I would do it. But since Tony's getting a little more rowdy on his mower, we're going to be installing this one inch axle shaft. So, like I was saying, we need this gear to sit perfectly on its axis point so that we don't have any stress going in places we don't want stress. And that's what these little hubs do. So they sit in there and with the bearings on, everything gets centered, all right? So what I'm gonna be doing is opening up this diff, taking out these two flanges and the axle shafts and everything, and then installing these ones into this diff and then using this parts into this diff. All right, so basically all I'm actually doing is taking these hubs and putting them over here. Now the big thing is I actually have to machine these hubs because I'll show you guys in a second why. All right, so let's get this diff open, get our hubs out, and then I'll show you what we need to do next. So with the diff open, you can see she's nice and greasy. That's all right. So things I'm looking at are bearings and shafts and both bear or all four bearings and the two shafts are looking crispy. Absolutely loving how these are looking. So, like I'm saying, these hubs, these cast steel or cast iron hubs, connected to the axle shaft with the splines inside the spider gears, all make it so it sits perfectly level in the case and there's no strain on certain spots. All right, so I'm gonna take these ones off because I haven't modified them at all or welded on them and I am going to drill them out. So once you got your differential out of your transaxle, you are left with two shafts and a bull gear and some spider gears. So each shaft flange has a spider gear and then with your eight bolts, they get bolted through the spider or through the bull gear to your other flange. So if you just did that, you would you wouldn't have any drive. But with the internal spider gears drives your inside gears. So this operation works exactly the same or very close similar to how your car or truck differential works using some spider gears on a pin and a uh, bull gear or they'd use a pinion gear, whatever. Anyways, now I can get these flanges taken off and explain why we need to machine them out. Let's get to it. All right, so this is why we need to machine them. So you can see the bore on this guy. That's a 7 8 hole. Yes, I have 1 inch axle shafts, but yet my flange is only a 7 8 hole. Well, the old peerless bastards, which I love you guys, you guys are great, you build awesome stuff, decided to turn down the end of the shaft to 7 8 I'm not sure on the reason, but uh, anyways, that's uh, making life a little more difficult. So, what we have to do is actually drill this out to one inch so that our new live one inch axle shaft will fit right through these guys and give us a hub centric uh, gear, the bull gear. So now we can actually bolt our two flanges onto the bull gear, slide our axle shaft through and we'll know that the bull gear is hub centric to the case. Then the next thing we have to do is actually build the little locker thing that sits inside so that when the bull gear spins, we can actually like build a little hub inside that connects to that bull gear. 
So I'm gonna show you that. It's gonna make more sense later down the road. But like I was saying, we gotta get these things to one inch IDs. So let's do it. A couple bit, a little bit of machining here, but that should be fun. Lots of nice parts on the table. I'm loving it. Let's do this. All right, so with everything cleaned up, that was just a little bit of effort, some elbow grease, some brake cleaner, and a little squeegee brush, and we got everything looking pretty damn clean. Now, I'm only using this stuff, but I went ahead and cleaned everything else just because I'm gonna be locking this differential in the next couple weeks, so might as well just get the work done while I'm here and already cleaning it. As for the hubs, you're gonna to wanna to get these things nice, nice and clean. So the brake cleaner works great, cause uh, yeah, now we got to uh, bore this unit out. So let's get uh, let's get doing that. <laughs> All right. So luckily for me, I just purchased this lathe not too long ago and have the ability to throw the flange in the lathe with a big ass drill bit. Right now, I just have a seven inch drill bit. This is the drill bit that would go in there, as you can see. Sorry, as you can see, slides right in, nice and easy. So I'm just making sure that it's all nice hub centric in the lathe. I know my lathe spins nice at the zero axis, so I'm good to go. Next thing I'm gonna do is throw the 5 16 bit in here and then the one inch and we should have a nice bored out hole. Now if I had a boring bar, I'd probably do that, but I got some nice drill bits, so let's give it a shot. All right, so we have a 5 16 hole now. New drill bit drilled out super well, lots of fluid. Drilled it very nice. So let's move on to a one inch hole and get Unreal. Let's do this. Next one. Let's go. There's the difference. Machined one inch hole. Machine 7 8 hole. Let's get on to doing this other one and keep on modifying. All right, so after some machining, some drilling, some sweating, some tearing, we got some parts. Now I still gotta make a couple more of these little bung pieces, but I'll explain what I got going down. So, I found this machinist lock ring and took off a few thousand off the top, off the outside layer, there's a lot more than that actually, but whatever. And I have my locking hub. Now, the shitty part is this ID was bigger than this OD, so I got some tape here to uh, actually get it nice and snug fit. And then, this being machined can fit into here nice and snug. Now we are left with just a spinning hub, not yet welded on, because I'm going to actually weld that full assembly, this lock ring, onto the collar. So with those pieces fit perfectly in the center, I can now move on to how I'm actually going to get the bull gear to spin with my axle shaft as one complete unit. Now, from factory it comes with these little recesses, they're like 3 quarter inch recesses in the bull gear. So the idea is, lay down some stock and insert those into there. One second. Like so. Now, the issue I'm left with. These protrude out of the uh, casing still, so I gotta lay down some more. Alright, so I'm gonna lay down these to get these to fit nice and flush and bring the collar up a little bit so I can weld the, uh, the ring to the lock hub. And boom, we have one spinning assembly that can be removed if the bull gear loses a tooth. Alright, let's get that done, show you guys what we're looking at. Lots of trial, error, and precision. We are able to get Nicely spinning shaft. Now, as you can see, if I spin this real fast, it doesn't spin the bull gear because it's not all locked in. But, oof, no weird oblong binding or anything. So, now the hard part, to weld it all together and make sure it still does that exact same thing. All right, let's open her up, get some tack welds on, see how she does. Let's go over some things. As you can see, some things are welded, grinded, everything in between. All right, bull gear. Locker, hub flanges, bull gear flanges, whatever you want to call them. So first thing I had to do, I had to grind off, you can see, I actually laid it on this side, laid it off the lip so that this foot fits flush on top of here. Because originally this little groove actually locks in 
to this uh, into the ID, but with my little tiny knuckles on here, my little units there that lock in to the uh, slot, that causes some issues along with the other side because this is a flat. Sorry, this is a flat piece. So again, that little ribbed edge. So that side's completely gone, and then this side, I laid down a few mils or a few thou, and then I notched in right here so that it can fit on these guys. So the idea is, and again, you don't need this ring on the bottom. You just need this collar and these two hubs. I like doing things the right way and making sure that I won't ever have to deal with it again. So I can place that now into here and I'll show you guys. All right, so with our hub locker assembled and tack welded into place, again, you're gonna wanna tack weld things and then install them, test it out, weld it again, and then do your final welds once you know that everything is nice and straight. So I got my piece here. Boom, that is the nicest fit anything I've ever done on anything. <laughs> no, super nice fit. And again, so now you can see the little notches. They will slide over here and that leaves me with, sorry, that leaves me with the no gap here. Flip around to the other side, same thing. Now you can see this is fully flush on this side. So we can not have a raised lip and boom, there you are. So now all we're left to do is actually install this and see how well it spins, if it's nice and hub-centric. I mean, look at it, it's pretty hub-centric, but these things operate on a zero axis. So let's try and find that, get it all in there, then burn this all together, get it all put back together, and call her a day. You guys like it? I sure do. Again, here's a little closer look up. So factory, you got these little tiny three-quarter inch slots that your spider gears lock into. Found myself a one inch hub with a nice size OD, found a lock ring that I machined down to fit inside of the bull gear, welded it all together. Now I can take this all out, take it all out. If this ever breaks, I can remake this, which I don't really wanna do. <laughs> it was a lot of work to make everything nice and hub centric. All right, let's get this all put together, show you guys what it looks like inside the case when it's all bolted together. Let's do it. All right, so we got it disassembled again because now it's time to burn the final bead into this guy. And my dad actually has a better welder, so I'm gonna be taking that over to his house. And we're just gonna run some beads along this outside to lock the lock collar onto this ring that I laid down. And then we'll come back here and we'll make sure again, it all fits nice and good onto the bull gear and we'll lock it all in. But again, I'd just like to say big thanks to myself for being all right <laughs> at the lathe. I'm super stoked with how the finish and the grind went there. Just lay it at its finest. It's just, it's awesome to have stuff that can literally hit that zero axis and turn at a fucking, at a good rate. So let's go get this burnt and we'll show you guys exactly how it goes together once we're back and it's fully welded. Let's do it. Is this guy running to get his shit done? Oh, Holy. Sorry. We just got back from Princess Auto in my dad's place and, ooh, that's still hot to the top. Boom, nice, you see that toe? Oh, Started yeah. to slide too, decent. Oh, perfect. We got that all welded up, looking awesome. Dad's welder did perfect. And then we picked up some quarter inch keyway because we got lots of stuff to lock in. Okay, let's get this assembled, Tony. All right, we gotta install some lock rings onto our one inch keyed axle shaft. Now, obviously it doesn't come with a notch in it, so I have a parting tip tool on here, which has a 1.8 millimeter tip on it. So if I measure that, 1.8, all right? And then if I measure a lock ring, they turn out one mil, all right? Shows up, one mil on there. So what I'm gonna do is throw my parting tool into the work, go in, it'll take out 1.8 millimeters worth of metal, and then I'm just gonna come out and go back in 0.2 millimeters and come in there so that we can fit two of these lock rings snugly onto the axle shaft, all right? Nice beauty part about the lathe here is I can run the full axle shaft in here and not worry mm -hmm. about the overhang on it. Yeah. Freaking love this thing. Let's get it done. All right.
check it out. I guess I should show you this first. Check that out. Two mils. Took off a few thou. Sorry. Both sides. There you go. Both sides. Beautiful. Fits two lock rings. Or one day we can find one big thick one. We just haven't found a place that sells them. We haven't really looked too hard. Anyways, we got this all welded. It's still hot, but it fits in here. Absolutely freaking beautifully. So now we can slide this onto our axle shaft. Hopefully. Oh, baby. So, what we have here now is a locked solid axle, one piece shaft to the bull gear. And if anything ever happens, we can remake it. Ask me if I will. I will, I will, I will. I'm, I'm sorry, I will. <laughs> you ain't breaking this one though, Tony. Oh, I think I'd... you're all good this time. Welder did well, I did well. Last thing we gotta do is install our plates. I got the one with the recess notches going on the side that has the little re or the little um, locking plates there. Boom. Throw our screws in there or a bolt. And that's all locked together. Crazy. It is crazy. I'm loving this. Gotta slide our bearings over, place it in, finalize it. Bearings on. Second <laughs> <laughs> oh, you oh man! You love to see it. Oh, that makes my heart and soul feel good, Mr. Toe. <laughs> Frick, that's decent, people. So, again, this isn't, we still, tomorrow, we're getting late into the day here. Tomorrow, we gotta open this back up, lock in the lock ring there, put some uh, Loctite on that set screw. Yep. Loctite all these guys. Get the bearings all lubricated again. We gotta put the O-rings back on. Put the case back on with some new grease and like reinstall it in the mower. I'm freaking happy, Tony. Let's call it a night. Yeah. Right Good job, buddy. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. All right, the mower's here. All right, so everything went perfectly. All we had to do is put the lock ring in the key here, or sorry, the lock, the keyway in the keyway, the key in the keyway, <laughs> I think what I'm trying to say, and then get everything bolted in, lock tighted it. We put spacer washers, so one inch spacer washers, one mil thick on here so that this has no side to side movement. You gotta be careful about your gapping between the input here to your uh, bull gear, so be careful about that. But otherwise, we're looking great. All we have left to do is fill this thing with some grease and uh, get the case back on. We got to make some little sleeves for uh, his rims so they don't get they don't move around on the key. But uh, yeah, that's looking decent. Essentially, people, that is how you do it. That is a full one-inch axle shaft, live axle in a Peerless 820, and it can be replaced if anything happens. But I think we know you're good to go for now. Oh, good to go for a while at least. Yeah. All right, people. So it is back together. We, we got our top little bracket brace on top. top. It spins real nice. Like, can't complain. Ready to go back in. All right. All right. So we had to build the spacers like we said, and then lock two lock rings on the outside, and another washer just so we ain't moving at all. Right Both here. sides. So along with this whole swap, we added an inch and a half out. So now he's. Three wide. inches wider, so all, my all together. Will stick out to about here, which is fairly equal to what Musky and uh, Scrappy are at right yeah. now, because they're both a fair bit wider than Magnum was. All in all, great swap, great work done. Let's get it out here. Let's get out on the trail, Toe. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you guys want to check out some of these off-road mowers, like Musty in the back, or even just see how Magnum was built, head over to the YouTube channel and our Instagram channel. We got lots 
of inst or lots of content that we post every day. Check it out. Thanks again, y'all. Magnum is killing it in the snow.